right now at noon, lawmakers at the state capitol discussing which legislative maps to choose from, what map the governor says he would sign. Plus, the Senate pulls an all-nighter and passes a major foreign aid package for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan, why it still faces an uphill battle in the House. You're watching News 3 Now at noon. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday afternoon. I'm Josh Breider. We begin with a first warned weather alert day where an incoming system could bring rain and snow. That storm is expected to arrive tomorrow night. Let's head out to the weather patio now where meteorologist Kelly Slifka has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. Hi, Kelly. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Josh. Uh, you know, we've got some of the uh, sun coming through the uh, clouds right now. So uh, kind of a, a nice afternoon, not as warm as yesterday, but uh, some breaks in the overcast at the uh, noon hour. We'll see that for the uh, rest of the afternoon. I can see uh, we had some clouds earlier this morning. They've been kind of breaking up and moving on to these. A lot more sunshine areas to the south and west of Madison uh, throughout the morning hours. Uh, we are warming up as a result, not as warm as yesterday, but we're at 35 in Madison, 36 currently in Middleton. So we are looking at a little bit colder weather this afternoon. Yesterday we hit 47, so we'll be just about 8, 9 degrees colder than that this afternoon. As uh, Josh mentioned, we do have an alert day for some rain and snow. This will be later Wednesday night into Thursday morning. It's going to be a short duration event. Now, we haven't really had a whole lot of winter over the last several weeks, so uh, it's been a while since we've had to deal with that, but we may have to deal with that by Thursday morning. Right now, it looks like minimal impact, but it could be a sloppy accumulation of some snow. We'll be turning colder, maybe actually below average, as we go into the later part of the weekend of the weekend. All right, the winds, not too much of a factor, but they are coming in from the northwest, and that's what's ushering in some colder temperatures at the uh, noon hour. We'll look at variably cloudy skies. Occasionally, we'll see some sun and look, some clouds will roll on through. Right now, we're kind of in between with both of those. As we get into the evening hours, temperatures will drop below freezing after uh, 7 o'clock after being in the upper 30s. So it will be a, another chilly night tonight. Right now, we're sitting at 35 at northwest wind at 9. Temperatures are gradually warming through the uh, 70s as we go through the afternoon with a mix of clouds and sun. We'll talk more about that first warm alert day and who can expect the most snow coming up in about 15 minutes? Mother Nature reminding us it is still winter, Kelly. It is. I mean, we're only in the middle of February. Yet, All so. right. We'll see you in just a few minutes. Well, right now, cleanup continues in Rock County after last week's historic tornadoes. Dozens of buildings are damaged, and there's still plenty of debris to clean up still in the Evansville area. The main force behind the effort, more than 700 community volunteers. They are helping clean up debris while providing resources to those in need. Anything that needs to be done, we're here. We've been delivering food and water and anything that uh, needs, we're here to take care of that. This is our home. <laughs> and we're proud of our community and proud of our people. The tornado that passed through Evansville was an EF2 reaching wind speeds of up to 130 miles per hour. Amazingly, no one was killed or seriously hurt. Continuing coverage out of Beaver Dam now, where several firefighters are hurt after a crash on Beaver Dam Lake. It happened last night just before 8. The firefighters were on the department's airboat near Grape Island when it crashed. One of the three is seriously injured. The DNR is investigating the cause with help from Deaver, uh, Beaver Dam Police and the Dodge County Sheriff's Office. State lawmakers could take a vote soon on the maps that decide how Wisconsinites will vote. The legislature's website shows a bill related to the legislative redistricting is on the Senate's calendar for today. News for Now political reporter Will Keneally is live at the Capitol. Good afternoon, Will. Hey Josh, yeah, so when we talk about these maps, it's not necessarily, you know, which side of the line you're on, but these maps can really control how much power each party has in the state capitol. So what Republicans are doing right now in the state legislature, we have the legislature controlled by Republicans, the Democratic governor um, being a Democratic governor. Uh, the legislature may take up the Democratic governor's maps and pass them today. Now, why would they do that? Uh, they want to avoid essentially a lawsuit in the state Supreme Court that's now controlled by liberals. And that's what we're seeing in the Senate today. So we could see them pass the governor's maps, actually send them over to the assembly today, and we could see them land on the governor's desk, uh, perhaps by the end of the day. I do want to note, though, we did check in with the state's assembly speaker uh, just a few minutes ago as he was walking by, asking him, will the assembly take up the maps if the Senate passes them? Uh, he said, it's a busy day, uh, don't know yet, so a lot to watch out for, all happening essentially kind of this afternoon. We'll have more throughout the evening shows, but for now, reporting from the state capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Will, thank you.
To Washington now, where the Senate approved with bipartisan support a major foreign aid package for Ukraine, Israel, and the Indo-Pacific following an overnight session. But where it goes from here is unclear, with House Speaker Mike Johnson already throwing cold water on the bill. Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill. The bill as amended passes. After a rare all-nighter, the U.S. Senate passed a major foreign aid package early this morning with 22 Republicans joining Democrats. The bill includes $95 billion in aid for Ukraine, Israel, and the Indo-Pacific. This is a rare moment where history is looking upon the United States and seeing if we will stand up for our values, stand up to bullies like Putin, and do the right thing. While the issue has divided GOP lawmakers... This is about whether we spend it across the ocean or whether we spend it in our country. Supporters say national security and democracy at large is at risk if U.S. allies don't get the help they need. This legislation would send a strong message to Putin that his goal of capturing free democratic nations will not be allowed to succeed. But where the bill goes from here remains unclear. The House Speaker says he won't consider a security package that does not include the southern border. The White House urged the House to pass the Senate foreign aid bill. Now it's time for the House to act. Provisions to boost border security had to be stripped from the bipartisan Senate bill last week after a growing number of GOP lawmakers said they didn't go far enough. In his rejection of the Senate strategy, House Speaker Mike Johnson said in a statement House Republicans were crystal clear any so-called national security supplemental legislation must recognize national security begins at our own border. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. In a statement, the House Minority Leader says House Democrats are prepared to vote on the bipartisan national security legislation advanced by the Senate. Well, the Madison School District is sharing the next steps in their search for a new superintendent. The process has been going on for months as candidates interview with the community and faculty. MMSD is holding a news conference right now to give more information about the hiring process and next steps. We're told the district will not announce the new superintendent today. News 3 Now is still accepting nominations for the Spirit of Service Award. We are proudly partnering with Vortex to raise awareness about veterans doing good in our community. Help us honor one with a $5,000 prize. Just head to the story on channel3000.com. Tell us in 1,000 words or less why the veteran you're nominating should win. We'll announce the winner next month on News 3 Now this morning. We'll still ahead on News 3 Now at noon why you might want to avoid rideshare services if you're going out for Valentine's Day. Also ahead, why consumers are filing a class action lawsuit against digital marketplace Timu. Before USA insulation, one room was colder than the other. It was harder to keep the temperature at a, at a good level. At that point, we realized that we needed to check into the walls and see what was going on. It's an older house. After USA insulation came in and, and put the foam in, we noticed almost immediately the following month was about a $40 decrease in our bill. The following month after that, it was around $50, $55. So we started seeing results almost immediately after they put the insulation in. USA insulation. A concert experience you won't want to miss. It's the Commodores. Hey, yeah. Performing live Saturday, February 17th at Ho Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. 70 million albums sold. Seven number one hits. The Grammy Award winning Commodores. February 17th at Ho Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Your odds are better here. Don't delay. The Brothers Main President's Day sale is happening now. Save storewide on top brands like Whirlpool, KitchenAid, Maytag, and Amana. We have the area's largest selection and lowest prices guaranteed. Feel like family. Brothers Main. Celebrate President's Day with Steinhoffels and indulge in the ultimate relaxation experience. Test rest a Beauty Rest Black Mattress for your chance to win a dream vacation to Hawaii. Queen Beauty Rest mattresses start at only $399. Plus, save up to $1,000 on Beauty Rest adjustable base sets. And when you upgrade to the luxurious Beauty Rest Black, you'll get $300 in Steinhoffels cash and a $100 MasterCard rewards card. Shop Steinhoffels President's Day sale. 
Have Medicare and Medicaid? iCare's dual eligible special needs plans offer an $1,800 annual allowance for eligible groceries and more. Rest easy. iCare is looking out for you and your health. I just love dancing, so I was always willing to dance through the pain. Since visiting the Good Feet store and wearing the arch supports and being pain-free now, my mood and my energy has drastically improved. Once that energy gets into you, double spins. <laughs> hey, Wayne, shopping for a new door? I sure am. This fiberglass door is really strong. We love ours. Do you need something more dependable? Yes, something that's durable, dent resistant, knows how to take a hit and is gonna last for years. We're still talking about the door, right? Uh, oh yeah, right, of course. Right now you can customize your home for 0% interest for up to 60 months when you place your order by February 23rd. Visit PellaWI.com today. Ads for digital marketplace Temu had a big night on Super Bowl Sunday, but a group of consumers in several states have filed a class action lawsuit in Illinois over the company's data collection practices. The plaintiffs allege Temu's app is deliberately loaded with tools to allow for dangerous malware and spyware on users' devices. A Temu spokesperson says the company categorically denies the allegations and will defend itself against what it calls meritless lawsuits. Drivers for the ride-sharing and delivery services Uber, Lyft and DoorDash are planning a strike tomorrow on Valentine's Day. Drivers have accused the companies of taking a huge cut of their fares as commissions. Some drivers involved told Reuters they believe the demonstrations will involve thousands of workers, though at least one company, Uber, says they do not expect the strike to impact business. And Valentine's Day is usually a time for couples to celebrate their love, but this year Pizza Hut is using its new sweet and spicy hot honey pizza to help some couples break up. The pizza chain's Hot Honey Goodbye Pies have space for a name on the box and can be sent for free in Chicago, Miami, and New York via the website goodbyepies.com. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. At the noon hour, here is your stock report. We are down so far today. Dow down 1 or 507. NASDAQ down 263. And S&P 500 down 59. Right now, our Call for Action volunteers are in the building taking your consumer complaints and taking action on your behalf. Volunteers are here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. You can call for action at 608-270-2833 or submit a claim anytime at channel3000.com slash call for action. Up next, Pam is watching today's ag prices and Kelly is tracking rain and snow in your first worn forecast. Then later on Live at 4, Consumer Reports with some Valentine gift suggestions for yourself or that loved one on your list. Flex Steel is furniture that comforts, furniture for living, furniture with a heart of steel. Save big during our Flex Steel authorized sale going on now at Wanaki Furniture ETC. Solid core composite frame, triple pane windows. Solid core composite frame, triple pane windows. I'm Scott the Window Guy from AHT Wisconsin Windows. Our solid core composite frame triple pane window is the most energy efficient window made for Wisconsin no matter what the season. Respond now and get $225 off each window at scottthewindowguy.com. Come on, Michael, come on. Catch the ball! Huddle up! Do you need to get your eyes checked? Well, actually, here's the play. Stanton Optical makes glasses in 30 minutes. It's easy on three. One, two, three. Easy! easy. Hut! Come on, come on, turn! Michael, catch! I can see! You did it! I did it! 30 minute glasses? Now that's an easy play. Stanton Optical. Easy's our thing. 
To everyone who believes in tradition, come enjoy a few of ours from Wisconsin. People in Wisconsin love a good fish fry. Really love. And we love sharing it with guests everywhere. At Culver's, we still batter our North Atlantic cod by hand to order. And we cook it to a crispy, golden perfection just for you. For you. For you. So it's crispy outside, flaky inside. Let us take care of you. With some homegrown traditions we were raised on. From Wisconsin with love. Welcome to Delicious. Flex Steel is furniture that comforts, furniture for living, furniture with a heart of steel. Save big during our Flex Steel authorized sale going on now at Wanakee Furniture ETC. South Central Wisconsin, where people unite for a brighter future and businesses thrive. And the food, oh, the food. Resilient, unwavering, always moving forward. Now, here's the deal. We've got our fair share of challenges, but here's the kicker. We own up to them. We advocate for change. We celebrate the good and we fix the bad. No settling, no backing down. That's our commitment to you. News 3 Now, always moving forward. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Welcome back at noon. Let's check in now with Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report. Hi, Pam. Hi, Josh. Yeah, the weather that we've got around Wisconsin, nice. Uh, the weather in South America, better. That's kind of what the tone in the marketplace is talking about today in Chicago. South America, of course, has been battling both drought and too much rain. Uh, it's a big country, and that means that it's tough to really get a gauge on what's happening as far as the production's concerned. Their South American soybean crop is coming in, and it's coming in big. Right now, according to John Heinberg, market advisor with Total Farm Marketing, spoke with him this morning, and he said, honestly, if we want to try to get any soybean business here in the United States, our price is going to have to come down almost a dollar compared to the cheap beans that are coming out of South America right now. I asked him about the situation with shipping, trying to make sure that we can get our products into the world marketplace. You know right now that basically the Red Sea is shut down as far as uh, large container ships making uh, safe transport through that artery. That means that an awful lot of the business is either going around uh, South Africa and trying to make it uh, to, let's say, the West Coast, or it is trying to go through the Panama Canal, which is very, very slow because of low water areas. Uh, he said that's just one of those situations compounding an already sad situation. Uh, the price of shipping has gone up so very, very high that then our U.S. soybeans look really expensive in the world marketplace. Just trying to help my soybean growers understand why they're seeing prices that continue to drift 8 to 10 cents lower today in Chicago. What else did we talk about? Well, pretty soon farmers are going to be looking for fertilizer for the spring planting. A lot of that first fertilizer comes up the Mississippi from uh, down in Louisiana and areas in the south. And the good news is right now water levels on uh, at both Memphis as well as coming up north on the Mississippi look pretty good. Should be able to hopefully make those uh, barges move a little quicker so that we have our supplies ready for spring. Kind of quiet today on dairy trading. Barrel cheese today is up a half a cent at 160. 40 pound black cheese, that's unchanged at 158 and a half. Double A butter, that's unchanged. 271 and a quarter per pound on a Tuesday. So there you go, Josh. Little insights into why the numbers were bleeding as much as they were for my farmers today, especially on soybeans. Yeah, it's interesting to see just how much of an impact we see outside of the Wisconsin region. We are global traders these days. That yes, is for we sure. Are. All right, Pam, have a good afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow. See you later. Mm -hmm. New at noon, a landmark report from the United Nations reveals more than a fifth of the world's wildlife is at risk of going extinct. Experts say people are mostly to blame, along with climate change. CBS's Ian Lee has that story. Billions of animals are on the move every year, heading to different environments to feed and breed as seasons change. From African elephants searching for water to turtles crossing seas to nest. Nature knows no borders. A first ever report on the state of the world's migratory species reveals one in five animals is threatened with extinction and 44% are seeing their populations drop. This means that species such as the endangered gray-headed albatross pictured here are edging closer to extinction. The UN assessment looks at nearly 1,200 wild animals. From birds to sea turtles to whales to gorillas 
but really it's about uh, understanding the key threats to these species. Experts say people are to blame for destroying or polluting habitats, pointing to overfishing and agriculture as key threats. And climate change is interfering with migration routes as seasonal conditions differ on the ground. We can't afford to lose the nature, but we need to think more smartly about how do we plan, protect, and ensure that we can still uh, ensure that nature survives and thrives. The migration journey can take iconic species across international borders and even continents. So authors of the report say it's crucial countries around the world work together to address the threat. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Let's get to your first warn of weather now. Meteorologist Kelly Slifka is out on the weather patio. Yeah, good afternoon, Josh. A pretty decent afternoon. Definitely not as warm as yesterday. Just a beautiful day yesterday. We're going to be about 10 degrees colder than where we were yesterday. We've seen a mix of some clouds and sun. We'll continue with that throughout the afternoon. We're going to jump right back in the 40s tomorrow. That's out ahead of our next storm system that's going to bring in some rain, snow showers come Wednesday night, eventually changing over to some all, all snow later Wednesday into early Thursday morning. And then it will turn colder, something we haven't seen for uh, several weeks where we're going to be colder than average, it looks like, by Friday and Saturday. Temperatures in the upper 20s, nothing drastic, but a little bit closer to where we should be for this time of February. Uh, right now, as mentioned, we've had a mix of clouds and some sun, and that will continue for the afternoon. Now it's all in all really not a bad day for this time of uh, February. Just not as warm as yesterday, 38 expected, but you got to remember our average now is 30. The good news is with the daylight getting longer here, our sunset is now an hour later than our earliest sunset uh, in the uh, first or in uh, December 21st. So uh, we are gaining that sunset as long as we can get it. All right, yesterday or last week, obviously, last Thursday, we had our tornado. We had two tornadoes, an EF2 uh, and an EF1. This was uh, one north of Milton, the one that uh, went through Evansville. This was, uh, Chrissy sent this picture. She was well away from it looking northward as that funnel was coming out from the cloud. We had a lot of pictures, really appreciate those. And that was the day we got up to 55 last week. So in seasonably mild weather, we tied the record high last week. And we've been unseasonably mild really for the last couple, three weeks. You have to really go back in the middle part of January when we saw any kind of temperatures that were close to average. Looks like we'll get there as we go into the weekend, at least the first half of the weekend. Temperatures in the upper 20s, but once again, it looks like we'll rebound right back through the 30s and even into the 40s by the middle of next week. High pressure control over weather did bring us some cooler weather coming in from Canada. We're watching two areas of uh, low pressure off to the west. One's going to be staying to our north, one over North Dakota. A secondary one over Wyoming. That's the one that'll be spreading uh, some precipitation our way come uh, tomorrow night into Thursday morning. So we'll track that. Some snows across Minnesota, eventually warm enough that some of this will mix with some rain here. Most of this will be occurring after midnight. That'll be the bulk of the precipitation, eventually changing over to some snow. And then we'll start to see some colder air wrap in on the backside of that system. As far as how much snow we can expect, generally one to three inches of snow across southern Wisconsin. This will be that sloppy wet snow. And it looks like that band of snow, the heavier snow, right across southern areas of the state. But as mentioned, most of this is going to be falling while we're asleep. After midnight, it should be done just about as the sun's coming up uh, Thursday morning, but just enough snow to create some problems on the roads. Minor impacts right now, one to three inches across southern Wisconsin late Wednesday night into Thursday. So uh, today we're looking at quiet conditions with temperatures gradually cooling back in the lower 30s by 7 o'clock. It won't be until later Wednesday evening, getting a little bit closer to 9, 10 o'clock in Madison. Most of this up to the north, a little bit of rain, snow mixed in. And even as we go through the overnight rain, a little bit of snow, kind of sloppy conditions waking up Thursday morning as some of this will be melting as we're above freezing but we will see some cooler weather work in on the backside of that system. Uh, 35 right now in Madison, 38 in Lone Rock, 36 in Janesville. Our first warm forecast, 38 today, 46 tomorrow. A chance of rain and snow developing late in the evening, continuing to early Thursday morning, mainly before the sun is up, but that's why we have the first warm alert day. It could be affecting the morning commute, and then it does turn colder with some light snow showers Friday into the weekend. Upper 30s return Sunday. All right, Kelly, thank you. Mm -hmm. Straight ahead on News 3 Now at noon, Howard's making something special for a special day in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. The fastest way to anyone's heart is through their stomach. And with the Valentine's Day treat we're making today, you can't miss. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today.
Race to savings at Menards. Mister creates thoughtfully designed faucets and fixtures that will fit perfectly with your style. Like this modern pen one-handle bathroom faucet with spot defense finish to help keep it shining like new. Get one today for $99.99. Upgrade your home with new flooring. We carry durable laminate flooring, easy to install sheet vinyl, and waterproof vinyl plank. Tidal Wave laminate flooring is just $2.29 a square foot. Race to savings now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Do you suffer with pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands or feet? Commonly diagnosed as peripheral neuropathy, are you taking drugs such as Lyrica or Gabapentin that have serious side effects and often do not relieve your symptoms? Your doctor has told you you may just have to live with the pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves, often causing burning, weakness, pain, numbness, tingling, and the most debilitating balance problems. Our facility uses multiple therapeutic methods to help give you relief from neuropathy symptoms with no injections and no drugs. You may start seeing relief after only a few sessions. To determine if your neuropathy symptoms can be relieved, we will do a consultation to evaluate the extent of your condition. Call us today to schedule your neuropathy consultation to find out if you're a candidate for our therapy. Call today. Madison Magazine's Best of Madison Readers Poll for 2024. Nominate the Best of Madison online today, including Beef Butter Barbecue for Best Barbecue, Best Catering. Cast a nomination for Beef Butter Barbecue and all your favorites on madisonmagazine.com. News 3 Now and Vortex present Spirit of Service, honoring those who've made a real difference in our community. Do you know a veteran whose actions have been a positive force in the area? If so, nominate them for the Spirit of Service Award. Log on to channel3000.com, nominate a veteran, and tell us why they're a pillar in our community. A winner will be selected on March 11th. Help us celebrate our hometown heroes. The Spirit of Service Award, presented by Vortex. Tomorrow's Valentine's Day, and you might want to make something a little special to bring to work to send with the kids to school, or to give to that someone special. So with that in mind, we came up with a from scratch brownie that's topped with chocolate dipped cherries that everyone will love. We begin by melting a good amount of chocolate chips with a bit of butter in a double boiler. Here I'm using a heat proof bowl over a saucepan. Once it's smooth, we whisk in some cocoa powder and set it aside to cool. In the meantime, we beat together some eggs, sugar, a little vanilla, and a touch of salt. Now we whisk in our melted chocolate. And once it's mixed, we add some flour. We spread this into a baking dish and pop it in the oven until it passes the toothpick test. While it's baking, we dip some cherries in melted chocolate, leaving just enough red to make them look Valentine's Day special. After the brownies cool, cut them into squares and drizzle each piece with melted chocolate, then top them with a chocolate dipped cherry. To get the recipe for our chocolate covered cherry brownies, simply visit our website. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a chocolate lover's way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Here's Kelly with a final check of your forecast. Yeah, not a uh, bad uh, Tuesday afternoon, just not as warm as what we saw yesterday when we got into the mid to upper 40s. Today will be in the upper 30s with a variably cloudy skies. Tomorrow, a milder day, once again, uh, out ahead of our storm system, that'll bring some rain and snow. Gives us alert day for some sloppy one to three inches of accumulation Thursday morning. A little colder by Friday with some snow showers. All right, Kelly, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Make it a great afternoon.